Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at exponential data and turning that exponential data into a linear model. So we can answer questions from exercise 1a of the year 2 applied textbook. So the first thing we're going to need to be able to remind ourselves about is how we can turn y equals ax to the power of n and y equals ab to the power of x into a linear model using logarithms. We saw how to do this in the first year of A-level maths. It was in the pure textbook under the exponential chapter. Now we're going to be using logs here to simplify this equation here um, into a linear model. So the first thing we do here is we take logs of both sides. Now what we mean by taking log, remember, is it's log of base 10 of both sides. Then we're going to use the law of logs on the right hand side to split up the um, the multiplication there with an addition of two logarithms and then we're going to move the n to the front using a power rule of logs as well. Now what you can see here is that the variable x is now a log x, the power is now a kind of scale factor multiplier, a is now kind of like a log a that's being added onto it and on the left hand side our scale is now log a on the y-axis, log y on the y-axis. Okay, so all of these bits match up, they turn into each other, and it's still the same equation, just written in a different way that will, when we draw it um, on a graph, it will be a linear equation um, where we have log y on the y-axis and log x on the x-axis. N here is then going to represent the gradient and log A is going to represent the y-intercept and that's important. So this one here is y-intercept and this one here is gradient. So the N value here is gradient. When you have a graph that has log Y on the y-axis and log X on the x-axis, just like that. Okay, so it looks something like that. Right, so let's have a go at the second type of equation. There's only two types of equations that you'll be asked to rearrange, and it's this one here now. Now this time, x is the um, is the variable. So this could be something like a, a car depreciating in value or uh, money in a bank account appreciating in value, where the power there um, is the number of years that the money has been in the bank account or the age of the car. So rearranging this one here, take logs of both sides again, same starting point. Split up the law of logs on the right hand side with an addition of the multiplication a times bx. Um, use the law of logs to move the x to the front there. And now we've got an equation where we're going to have log y on the y-axis. It's just going to be bog standard x on the x-axis, so that's the main difference between the two graphs. One will have a log x on the bottom, one will just have a standard x on the bottom. So therefore it's going to be log b that is the gradient, previously it was just the n value that was the gradient, and again, which is always the case, log a is the y-intercept. So this here now has changed this equation here into a linear model that will look something like that. Okay. So let's get started on these types of questions then. So um, you, what I would recommend is maybe not so much memorize the, um, the two forms here, but just remind yourself how you can turn either one of these two equations that we've seen just um, into the linear equation form. Okay, so we've got two types of equations then. One where the variable has been raised to a power, it might be a square root, it might be a one over something, it might be a squared, it might be a cubed. And in this case here, it's more of an exponential model where you have a um, interest rate um, as the base value and then it's x being the number of years that you're investing for, etc, etc. So do two different types of models there. Let's get stuck into a question then. The table to the right shows some data collected on the temperature in degrees Celsius of a colony of bacteria and its growth rate. The data are coded using the changes of variable x equals t and y equals log g um, there. The regression line of y on x can be found to be y equals minus 0.2215 plus 
part a is Mika says that the um, or Micah says that the constant minus 0 0.2215 in the regression line means that the colony is shrinking when the temperature is zero degrees. Explain why Mika is wrong. Well, if we think about it, when um, the temperature is equal to zero, that's going to be the, um, the top line there. Um, when the temperature is equal to zero, x is equal to zero as well. So when you um, when you replace t with zero, x becomes zero as well. So therefore, y is just equal to this thing here. Substitute x equals zero in, and what you get is y equals minus 0 0.2215. Now, what that effectively means when we put log g back in, is that g um, is equal to 10 to the power of minus 0 0.2215, and that gives us 0 0.600. So in terms of the growth, the growth is actually going to be uh, 0 0.6 um, grams. Okay. So it's not correct because we've done a change of variable, and the change of variable um, means that we need to rearrange it by doing 10 to the power of that value. So the rate of growth is positive and it is not shrinking. Part B, given that the data can be modelled by an equation of the form g equals k to the power of b times b to the power of t, um, where k and b are constants, find the values k and b. So, what we need to be able to do then is to be able to replace y here with log g because that's what it's equal to and x here with t because that's what x is equal to and then we can rearrange this equation here to rearrange it back into g equals k to the, k times b to the power of t. So rearranging this equation here now we're going to get rid of the log and the way we undo a log base 10 is do 10 to the power of the other side. Split up the indices, it's an addition of two indices, so we multiply them with the same base number. And then we simplify the 10 to the power of minus 0 0.2215. 10 to the power of minus 0 0.2215, we've already seen, is 0 0.600. And 10 to the power of 0 0.0792, leave the t to one side for now, is 1.20. So therefore, k, the effect of starting growth rate is 0 0.6 grams, and then b, which is effectively the rate of the rate at which the growth is increasing by, is 20%. Effectively, it's 1.20, which is the decimal multiplier for the um, for the rate of growth. Okay, so your turn to have a go at this question here. Then pause the video and try this question out. All right then, so here we have a uh, time in TMS. I'm not quite sure MS, it might be minutes, or it might be, I don't know, uh, needed for a computer algorithm to determine whether a number n is prime, uh, is recorded from different values of n. Uh, a scattered graph of T against n is drawn. Explain why a model of the form T equals A plus B n is unlikely to fit this data. It looks like it's a curvy set of data, and basically that's what you need to describe. The data is non-linear. The data is not linear. Okay, next question then. The data are recorded, the data is recorded using the change of variables y equals log t and x equals log n. The regression line of y on x is to be found by y equals minus 0 0.301 plus 0 0.6x. Find an equation for t in terms of n, giving your answers in the form t equals a n to the power of k, where a and k are constants to be found. So it's the other type of data that we were working with in the example beforehand. So what we do is pretty much exactly the same. We start off with y equals minus 0 0.301 plus 0.6x. Replace y with log t. and set the rest of the equation as the same, and then x gets replaced with <coughs> log n. 
So now we need to do the inverse of logging both sides, which is to do 10 to the power of both sides. So it's 10 to the power of minus 0 0.301 plus 0 0.6 log n. Then we're going to have uh, split up the indices because it's the addition of two powers. So we can split them up with a multiplication um, where the same number is 10 on the base. OK, so what I want to do now is I want to work out what 10 to the power of um, minus 0 0.301 is. And that is basically 0 0.5. And then we're going to times that by, well, it's going to be 10. Which one do I, how do I want to split this up here? Well, I've got 0 0.6 times log n. I reckon if I put log n inside the bracket, and then I put 0 0.6 outside the bracket. Remember, a power of a power, you multiply the powers together. So I've kind of just used that rule in reverse here. So in that case there, 10 to the power of log n, that's going to be cancelling each other out because the two things are inverses. Log base 10 and 10 to the power of are two inverses. So it's going to be 0 0.5 times n to the power of 0 0.6. And there we are. That's the answer to this question then. So have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 1a before you move on to 1b and 1c. Um, it's just basically using what we've done in the first year of uh, A-level maths uh, and reminding yourself of it so that we can use it for regression lines um, for the next video. Thanks very much for watching.